Well, uh, what I want to do is show you how to simplify this radical expression. So the way that I, <coughs> I'm going to do this is a little bit of a um, straightforward way. One thing I want to uh, kind of go through and speak with you about is at least understanding um, you know, the square root of a square number. Right? The square root of a square number is just going to equal that number, right? So there's special types of number. Here I'm dealing with the variable, but there's special types of numbers that we can take the square root of, which we call our square numbers, right? Those numbers are like 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. So right here I have 500, and if you take a look at it, 500 is not <clears throat> a square number. Um, it doesn't have two factors that are exactly the same that you can that you can multiply by themselves to give you 500. However, what I'm going to want to do is see if I can rewrite 500 as a product of a square number and another number. Um, so what I have here is, let's take a look at it. So if I do negative 2 times, I can rewrite 500 as 100 times 5. And I know 100 is a square number because that's 100 times, or I'm sorry, that's 10 times 10, right? Now I need to see how can I rewrite m to the fourth, n to the fifth, and n and p to the third as a product of a square number that I can take the square root of. And p to the four, p or m to the m to the fourth can be m squared times m squared. N to the fifth could be n squared times n squared times n. And p cubed can just be p squared times p. Now, why am I uh, multiplying all these out? Well, remember that uh, when we multiply numbers with exponents, we add the exponents. That's how I get n squared times n squared times n to the first power equals 2 plus 2 plus 1, which is going to be n to the fifth. So now by applying this, so now I've rewritten this out, right? These are equivalent. Well, now what I can do is I can take the square root of each one of these numbers and simplify it. So here I have negative 2 times the square root of 100 is just 10. I can't take the square root of 5, so that's going to remain under the radical. The square root of m is m. The square root of m is m. And this is base by here. The square root of n is n. The square root of n, sorry, the square root of n squared is n. This n is going to have to remain on the radical because you can't take the square root of n. The square root of p squared is just going to be p as well. Then what was left over? I had an, a 5, this n, and this p. So those are going to remain under my radical symbol. So I have 5 and p. Okay, so now we can go and simplify this again. Negative 2 times 10 is going to give me a negative 20. Uh, m times m, since it's a number times number, is going to give you m squared. n times n is going to give you n squared. And then just because I have a, this p all by itself, um, here I know that these numbers are automatically always going to be positive. But here I don't know that this is going to be a positive number because I'm just taking the square root. So I want to represent the absolute value of it to ensure that it's going to be positive. All right. See here, if these were positive or negative, it would have been okay because n times n gives you n squared, which we know is going to be positive. But here, um, we need to represent it with the absolute value because it's just p by itself. The square root, remember we take the square root of a number, it's plus or minus that number. So the square root of p squared could be plus or minus. Well, we want to represent that positive value since that's what it was in the problem. So we have p squared times our absolute value of p, and then times what's left in our radical, which is 5 and p. And there you go. That is your final solution. Thanks.